Hi guys, the other day Oprah Winfrey was interviewing distant swimmer Diane Nyad and Diane was talking about the sense of wonder that she feels at the universe and Oprah said to her, well I don't call you an atheist then. I think if you believe in the awe and the wonder and the mystery that that is what God is. Now. The friendly athe uh, atheist um, Hemant Mehta has already um, made a really good video to respond to that. But I wanted to explore a more interesting area. Um, one of the things that causes me the greatest problem as an atheist, as a believer in evolution, is an understanding of how our brains come pre-programmed with certain skills. Um, I think a, a theist once said to me it's called a priori knowledge. Um, and there's little doubt to me that we do come programmed with certain skills, even if it's the skill to look at things and be curious about them and then work out and copy and mimic, you know. There's certainly some basic software that we come with. And that has always, um, uh, you know, even, even though I understand the principle of evolution and how things can evolve over millions of years, that has always really really amazed me that that could come about purely naturally but I thought that it would be interesting to understand or, or at least to consider what purpose what evolutionary function a sense of awe might actually serve so um excuse me I just have some notes um so the first thing is that I think that awe like morality can be culturally learned because if you grow up in a family that has um no sense of wonder at the universe. You, you know the kind of people, the people who are, you know, are almost just like cheap. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm watching TV, just, you know, the world goes by them. They have no curiosity about the world whatsoever. Um, then the kids will tend to have the same view of the world, which kind of implies to me that, that uh, curiosity about the world is a learned behaviour to a certain extent. But, but even if that were not the case, I, I think that there's um, there's a good argument for an evolutionary purpose to that. So uh, let me give you my theory. Um, imagine you're a caveman, or uh, you know, uh, even something before that. You're used to seeing the world. I think um, um, Richard Dawkins talked about having brains which were evolved to cope with life at the scale we we see it at you know the human scale and and that when when we see things on the on the macro you know black holes the universe and stuff like that we can't cope with the scale of it and when we see things that are very very tiny we just can't wrap our heads around it by and large and it, it just blows our mind and that's why why people start inserting god into the equation now there's a name for that type of um religious argument not god of the gaps but but just a you know a, an argument from ignorance i guess you'd call it um, where, whereby you see something you don't understand how it works, therefore God did it. But but this is not really the purpose of this video. Um, the, 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 the purpose for me is to say, well, if, if, if our tiny little monkey brains are designed to cope at the, st the scale that we're at, when we see something very different to the scale we're at, it, it at the very least causes curiosity, you know? Um, especially when that scale is much larger, you know, much louder, much larger, much faster than the scale that we're used to working at. And the reason for that is because that is potentially dangerous, you know. If, if you're out walking walking across the savannah and then you see a huge great shadow, uh, assuming it's not a cloud, it, it, it is in your interest to pay attention to it because that might be a predator. Um, uh, likewise, if you hear a very loud noise, it could be a volcano, it could be a predator, it could be, you know, it could be a tree falling on you. So, so I think that we are attuned naturally to respond with respect to to things which are outside the norm of, of our daily experience in terms of scale and volume and speed and things like that. And and I think also um to go back to the Richard Dawkins thing that that. You can extrapolate that then when we see things which are, are, are really, really vast and, and incomprehensible to us. You know, if, if I say something's a few light years away, you know that's a long way, but you, don't, you can't comprehend that in terms of actual millions or trillions of miles. You, 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 just, you, you, you just kind of substitute distances that you do know and, and, and kind of extrapolate 
uh, it sounds kind of crazy, but 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 you 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 put it into terms that you can understand. So so you if I say something's a million light years away, you have no conception of how a million light years looks, how it how long it takes to travel, how how that relates to your world. So what you just do is think very 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 far. And, and that's as far as it goes, almost like a, a symbolic placeholder distance that you put into that. Um, and and whenever we encounter things that, that are just on that scale, really, not, not even light years, but, you know, like the Grand Canyon, you know, if, if, if you're a little caveman and you're used to walking around and, and everything can kind of more or less be seen, and then suddenly this huge expanse opens out before you it could be the Grand Canyon it could be the ocean it could be could be a plane if you've lived in the jungle all your life uh, that demands respect because it's a completely new experience you know and 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 it's something which needs to be understood and and I think that that lack of understanding plus that sense of scale is what gives us a sense of awe um and and I I, I just I don't know really I, I don't think it really goes much deeper than that you know that even if something is culturally learned, at some point there must be somebody somewhere back there that, that had a sense of awe that wasn't taught to them by someone else, you know, that, that collectively a sense of awe developed. And, and I think that that has just developed in response to a, to a world which, quite frankly, that, that anything bigger than us is threatening, anything faster than us is threatening, anything louder than us is potentially threatening. And and so, so we get that... You, you, uh, an easy um, way to test this is if, if you um, even just turn up your subwoofer and then turn on a, a cop show where they're shooting and guns and that rumble in your, in your stomach, that co creates the same feeling almost of all, you know, that kind of, you know, that ever so slightly nervous tension. And, and I think that that is a, a natural subconscious reaction to things which, which, as I say, are potentially threatening. So uh, I haven't really thought this one through very well, guys, but I um, I hope that it, uh, inspires you to leave some comments and, and maybe your own feelings about where this came from and um, I, I would really be interested if you had any thoughts about how we how our brains have evolved over time to give us a priori programming uh, you know a basic basic appreciation of logic for example um, for processing between what we see and, and what we make of that I'd be really interested to hear your opinions on that Thank you guys, you have a great day. Hey guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment, and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.